dear learner welcome to interactive multimedia module on development economics this is your lesson number 2 which will be on measures of development our resource person is professor upala vidana patrana of the department of social sciences open university of sri lanka professor vidana patrana over to you yes thank you lal now we have seen that in the past session developing countries cannot be uh, grouped into one using one common criteria because there's a huge difference among the developing countries and that is why we developed a common framework and that common framework as we discussed last time combines three components the self-sustenance the freedom of choice and self-esteem and from there on, we'll have the next session, which is going to be based on the session two of your lesson material. Uh, Professor Vidana Patran, in our earlier discussion, you mentioned that countries are diverse. In, if that is the case, what are the elements of diversity? Yeah. Now, this concept of diversity of countries has been there. And of course, the uh, World Development Report in 2006 has looked at the diversity, particularly in terms of people who have and people who don't have. If to me, if I if I am to quote it, countries and regions have deeply divided between streets of haves and those of have-nots. That's World Development Report 2006. So this diversity of haves and have-nots, or whatever diversity you may call it can be reflected in terms of haves and have-nots, or you can have them or see them in terms of income or non-income form of social well-being. There are other forms of diversity. For instance, country A would be different from country B in terms of the size of GDP, its wealth, its population, its geographic extent, uh, it's uh, other concerns depending on the security or insecurity or the standing in the UN and other organizations. So this diversity is visible when you look or map the countries in a particular mechanism. In that case, Professor Vidana Patrana, what are the hardcore measures of development? Yeah. Now, just to tell you a little bit more about the elements of diversity. If you look at uh, the, uh, for instance, GDP per capita, right, of three sample countries, we've taken USA, India, and Congo. The data is a bit old. Data is 2007. I think the book has basically the new data. Now, the old data, 2007. The new data is 2012. If you look at the uh, session, the material, study material gives you 2012 data. To quote 2007 data, I'm doing it with, a, with something in, in, in mind so that you will look at both the book as well as listen to the video. This difference, GDP per capita of USA is roughly about 44,000 US dollars. India, it's about 30,000 US dollars. So not 30, 730, 730. If you look at the poorest country in 2007, which is Congo, it's Seven, 2007, 270 rather, 270. So you look at 44,700 plus and 270 in a range of from the richest to the poor. In fact, USA was not the richest, but one of the very rich, powerful countries. Look at population. USA, about roughly about 300 million people. You look at India, 1,100 million. Look at Congo, only 7 million. Take another diversity element, life expectancy. That is how many years a child born today would live. USA, 78 years. A child born today would live 78 years normally on the average. If you go to India, it's only 64 years. If you go to Congo, it's 44 years, roughly very much closer to half of the US level. 
One more element, I just tell you one more element, malnourishment, malnutrition. You say the ratio of people who are malnourished is only 3% of the total population. If you look at India, 20% of population are malnourished. If you go to Congo, 54% of the population are malnourished. So this is the element of diversity which we have been looking at. Now, we, you ask me something about matrices of development, right? Yes. yes. So we have, based on this, you, have, you can have GDP-based matrices or measures like cross GDP, per capita GDP, GDP or GNP. You can have per capita GDP. You can have another one, PPP, purchasing power parity GDP. Right? Purchasing power parity GDP, adjust your income in terms of your capacity to purchase depending on the country you live. Why? Because if you take, for instance, a can of coca, Coke in USA is about $1. But you can buy the same can of Coke in India for 20 cents. So purchasing power, the capacity to buy with $1 in India is cheaper. Therefore, to compare the dollar value, you have the PPP US dollar, which is purchasing power parity GDP. These are basically GDP-based materials. And then you have non-GDP material, non-GDP uh, criteria or matrices. You have the holistic measures like PQLI, that is physical quality of life index. There are other indices which we look at later. You also have something else which is human development index. So this, there are a range of measures or matrices that you and I can use to check, to examine, to study how different countries fare in terms of development. These are the measures of development. Yeah, uh, you, you said there are hardcore and holistic measures and human development index. Yeah. Could you take us through the holistic measures of development? Yeah, now holistic measures of development is basically, uh, basically, you know, measures where they try to combine more than one dimension of development, not just one measure, like GDP. They are combined more than one. Like, for instance, can you remember Dudley Sears said it has to be, it is not necessarily growth GDP. It has to be poverty reduction. It has to be uh, inequality reduction. It has to be unemployment reduction. So these are different dimensions. So holistic, holistic measures try to combine some of them and prepare one measure. And this concept was uh, developed in the 1970s, mid-1970s. The first uh, organization was UN organization, UNRISD, UN Research Institute for Develop uh, Development. Uh, they developed 16 core indicators of development, 16 core indi indicators, not just one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to 16 different measures. And they said if you combine all of them, then you'll get a, some idea about the development. Now, just to give you some examples, they said you must have the expectations of life at birth. We discussed it earlier, how many years a person would live after the birth. They also said GDP ratio of manufactured products. How much of a GDP come from those products that come from factories, not from agriculture, not from services? If you have a manufacturing high GDP, that would mean that country has a stable base. So that's second one. That's another example. Another example of, you know, you might see, wonder why this example is. That example is newspaper circulation per thousand people. Another example, that means newspapers are produced, people read them, per thousand people would mean more people read newspapers. At, that also would mean that most pe more people are reading, right? So likewise, when you put all of them together, another one if you want, uh, electricity consumption. How many people consume electricity for household, household uh, 
purposes like cooking and etc. So, when you have all 16 together or when you have all of them or many of them are at a better level, that means that country is developed. If they are, if, if they are poor in terms of uh, life expectation, poor in terms of electricity consumption, if you are poor in terms of manufacturing GDP, if they are poor in terms of newspaper circulation, then that must be a poor country. So that's why they said uh, holistic measure has to have so many things together. And uh, that, is the, 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 that is an example of holi one holistic measure. If I may go to the second holistic measure, I don't know whether you want to ask that question, is about PQLI index. Do you want to ask that question? Okay, why not elaborate yeah, yes. on that? The PQLI is about the physical quality of life. This was developed again in 1970s, mid-1970s, or so maybe rather early 1970s. When it was developed, you know, it is very important for all of us, all Sri Lankans, that Sri Lanka came almost to the top of the list of PQ, P, PQLI, comparable to some of the developed countries in terms of physical quality of life. Now, this was developed by two researchers, both have the name Morris. So it is Morris and Morris, 2000, no, so 1979. Morris and Morris, 1979, developed the PQ, PQLI index. He combined expectancy at birth, infant mortality, and literacy. Again, I'm reading expectancy at birth. He said that earlier. Infant mortality, how many infants die before they reach the 12th month birthday? Infant mortality. And then the literacy, again, adult literacy. Can the adults read and write? That is adult. If you combine all three of them together, then that would show, according to Morris and Morris, a kind of development that the world would want to see, right? And you might see that it has nothing, almost absolutely nothing about GDP. So it has nothing about GDP. It has nothing about GDP per capita. It has all new three measures of development. Now I'm coming back to what I said about Sri Lanka. In 1979, Sri Lankan GDP at that time was 300 US dollars, 300 US dollars. But our PQLI ranking, ranking of 82 countries was very high, extremely high. And I cannot have the figures here, but I think the figures are there in the book. You look at the book and see where we stand in terms of the ranking. It was very high ranking, uh, much closer to more than 0.7 at that time. All the developing countries, including India and Latin American countries, most of the African countries, so almost all African countries were far behind Sri Lanka at that time. So this is about PQLI, but this measure was uh, abandoned, abandoned in 1990. I will not go into the details of why it was abandoned. Right. So, Professor Vidana Patrana, could you tell us what the Human Development Index is? Well, it's very interesting that it is one of the, uh, I would say it's not the most modern, but it is one of the recent development indicators started in 1990 by two Asian scholars, Asian economists. One is Amartya Sen, a Nobel laureate, and the second one was Sudhir Anand. The two, these two people are very important for Sri Lanka because they have written a lot about Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan economy, one of the two, pe two, two people who have written a lot about Sri Lankan economy are Sudhir Anand, Anand and uh, Amartya Sen. Now what they did was they looked at three or four measures of development and tried to prepare one composite indicator, which is known as Human Development Index. So by nature, it does not look at the income levels, but rather human development, the well-being aspect of human beings, right? The components they looked at, first one was the standard of living. Now standard of living measured in terms of GDP per capita. Second one they looked at, longevity. The longevity was something that we discuss, discuss in terms of life expectancy. How many years would a person who is born today would live? 
The third one is, has two aspects. One is the, which is called knowledge, which has two aspects. One is the adult literacy, which is earlier also we looked at adult literacy. The additional one they looked at was the years of schooling. Adult literacy is whether an adult is able to read and write and understand. The years of schooling is whether a, whether a school going on the average, school going children on the average would go to school for how many years? Five years, which is primary level only. Secondary, maybe nine years. Or maybe more than that, tertiary, 12, 13, 14 years. So that is, those are the four things that are combined. So when all of them combine, you have a HDI which range from zero to one. Zero to one, and one is the whole number. Anything less than that has to be a decimal point. And then they said, you have three, originally they said three categories of countries. Low human development countries, medium development development countries, and high human development countries. The medium, the, the, the low human development ones are those countries which has the HDI level of less than 0 0.49, from 0 to 0 0.499. The median, medium countries are those countries which have from 0 0.5 to 0 0.799. And the high development countries are, high human development countries are, those countries having the HDI index of 8 to 1. So these are the, the kind of characteristics of HDI. Now if you look at some examples of uh, low HDI, medium HDI, and high HDI. Say Niger in 1978 or so. The rank was, rank of Niger was 177, almost the lowest level, right? Their HDI was 0.31. And their GDP per capita PPP was 779. Usually PPP GDP is higher than the usual American US dollar Per, cap, per capita. So this PPP per capita, which is about 779. Then medium country, we have taken India, rank was 126, HDI level was 0.61, and the GDP PPP was 3,130. Right? We put medium level Sri Lanka also. Sri Lankan rank was 93, much lower than the Indian rank, that is much better. And the HDI value was 0.75, and then the GDP per capita, PPP, was 4,340 US dollars, PPP, purchasing power parity. And high HDI countries, number one was Norway, right? It has the HDI value was 0.965, 0 0.965, the Best is 0.1, not 0.1, whole 1, right? This, they, they have reached very much closer to 1, 0.965, and its PPP GDP was 38,000 US dollars in this particular year. So you would see very high HDI countries, medium HDI countries, and very low HDI countries, of which Sri Lanka belongs to the medium level. The richest at this particular point of time is Norway. In fact, Norway has been continuing to uh, retain its position every, almost every year. There are some years where it has lost its uh, primary prime position. And poor countries are basically Niger, Congo, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and those countries. So this is about the status of HDI. Uh, okay, Professor, we have seen different measures of development so far. Yeah. Is there any way of comparing them? It has to be, I think there has to be a mechanism. And uh, one way to do that would be, you take the index, say per capita GDP, PPP GDP, or PQLI, or social indicators that we looked at in terms of uh, UNRISD or HDI. You have list of them in one side. 
and then you look at them in terms of who developed it, right? You can look at them and say what are their content, what is the content of this measure? You can look at what is the focus of this measure, I mean, what are they looking at? Are they looking at the material benefits, material well-being, or are they looking at human well-being, social well-being? You can look at the benefits. What are the benefits of one measure against the other measure? You can also look at the pitfalls, the disadvantages, the shortfalls of the measure. To give you an example, GDP per capita, you don't know who the author is. Maybe one of the uh, UN uh, or World Bank would have done it earlier. It has a long history. It's 1950s, you, you could see the GDP. So uh, maybe one can look at it and dig out and see who the author is. Content is gross national income adjusted for the population growth. Right? For instance, without considering population growth, you may say country's gross national per capita grows at 5%, population grows at 2%, therefore you deduct 2 from 5, so GDP per capita grows at 3%. You take the disadvantages of population growth away from the material output, and then you have the adjusted population GDP adjusted for population growth, right? Now what is the focus? Focus is output. Focus is income. Focus is material world, material development, material benefits. So that's a focus. The benefit is beneficial because it's simple. It's not complicated. It, all countries are measured in their GDP. You divide it by the population growth, and you get the per capita GDP. Take the population growth out, you get adjusted population growth GDP. And it's easy. Uh, I mean, or any, any uh, income measurement authority, Sri Lanka, it's, uh, it's Department of Census and Statistics now. So they can just look at the uh, growth of various sectors and say, okay, this is the GDP per capita. So they, they do it every year. By April, you get your figures, right? Every year, they do it. So benefit is simple summary. What are the pitfalls? It doesn't look at the cost of living differences. It does not look at many other things, like it does not look at the social well-being. It only looks at the material, material and you, you divide by people, and you say everybody gets the same share, whereas in practice, when you have a general average, there will be some rich people getting very high income, and some poor people get very low income, and average would be a middle ground, middle level. So it is, to that extent, GDP per capita does not reflect the reality. The second measure, we will not look at all of them. We look at another one, GDP, GNI PPP, Purchasing wow. Power Parity GDP. Some of the things are common. Its focus is output. Its benefits are you look at the you know, distortions that may arise in terms of the cost of living because it's purchasing power parity adjusted figure. Purchasing power parity adjusted figure. So it does not mean that, you know, Indian, Sri Lankan or American, it doesn't mean because you, are, you have taken away as much as possible the cost of living implications. So that, that, those are benefits. Then we look at PQLI, author now, we know Morris and Morris. Combine three indicators, content, focus is health and education, and then you hit PQLI benefits, a very broad social indicator. It is pitfalls, shortfalls, it has not taken into account income. So that's a pitfall. HDI is the last one. Now the author is, we said, Sen and Anand or you can say UNDP, you look at the income, health, and education, you look at the focus, which is the overall development, and you have benefits, it's a composite measure, and you have the pitfalls, it does not look at the deprivation, like poverty, it does not look at unemployment deprivation, so those are the pitfalls. So, just to 
comment again on some of these figures. You look at, if you look at the measures of economic development, the measures of economic development, we look at the material measures of economic development, you look at the social measures of economic development, the material measures are basically the flow values, the income values of, 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 of the total population of those countries. And you will see that either GDP or GDP per capita or GDP per capita PPP, right? And we'll say this is what that country produces in a particular year. And you will see that they are improving. If they, are sus if they have sustained improvement, continuously improvement, improvement for a longer period, it has an element of development, not full development, but element of development. But you look at the other figures like PQLI, and if more so with the HDI, where you look at the social aspects plus the GDP. They have combined both of them. The advantage of that is that you looked at the uh, increase or improvements in the material well-being plus the improvement in the social well-being in terms of longevity, yes, how many years a person would live, improvements in terms of adult literacy, improvements in terms of years of schooling, and when you have years of schooling and literacy, you also have health improvement. So all those improvements combined, you have the HDI, which is a little better indicator. So these are the type of indicators that you have to measure the process of development and so and as a result you as an outcome you might be able to see how diverse the world is and where do you stand in terms of this diversity. Thank you. Right. Uh, professor, with so many components, development could be considered multidimensional. Could you comment on that? Yes, in fact, yes. Development is multidimensional. It has the normative concepts like poverty, inequality, unemployment, which are, uh, unemployment is a bit uh, measurable. Then you have social aspects like literacy, standard of living. Then you have the other indicators like, you know, for which you don't have reliable data like quality of life. Right? You don't have uh, satisfaction, uh, human satisfaction. Then you also have the growth figures like GDP, GNP per capita, all of them are dimensions of development. So if you can look at all of them, you have a multi-dimensional indicator of development, which is not very easy to find. But as a concept, development has always been multi-dimensional. And it's based on this that I would step into the next item as well, Lal the MGD, which has uh, quite a number of indicators combined, which has eight indicators and large number of indices, measures, that are combined together, that was developed in uh, 1990, this year. It was developed in 2006 or so, or 2002, I can't remember the exact date. And then you have looked at the uh, Millennium Development Goals, and they want to say what would the status of a country in 2060 and whether you have achieved, you have the objectives given, you have the, you have the measures given. For instance, eradication of extreme poverty is, is one uh, objective. Whether a country has been able to have 50% reduction of the one dollar poverty level a day, right? Another one, achieve universal primary education. By 2016, all boys and girls must be able to complete primary education. So those are the uh, eight components of uh, MGD, and MGD is an example for a multi-dimensional measure of development. Okay, thank you, Prof. Dana Patrina. Dear learner, we have just finished lesson two of development economics. I we strongly urge you to go and read session two of your course.
course material book so that you can consolidate this knowledge. Thank you.